Hello class, how are you doing? Welcome back. One of the application of the derivative which you studied in Calculus 1 was optimization. And I'm sure uh, as an engineer, as a businessman, as a president, as a vice president, no matter where you are, you try to use your position to optimize your outcome. But remember, in no matter what position you are holding, you are encountering some constraint. Therefore, money is going to be an issue wherever you're going to be a president or vice president. Even if you're president of the United States, you cannot tax people 100%. There's a certain amount. Therefore, you have a certain amount of money that you can spend. As even a president of the United States, your constraint is the Congress. You cannot do whatever you want to do. You want to run a business, you cannot hire as many people as you like. You cannot spend the large amount of money to rent a place or to keep it open for 24-7 or on electric bill or on the water bill. Therefore, you do have constraints wherever you go. But let's talk about optimization in Calculus 1. Remember, in business, you always have profit. But profit is born from the revenue. But remember, in order to have a revenue, you have to have some items to sell. In order to have some items, it's going to cost you to make those items. Therefore, Let's say you're going to make pen. And you're going to produce so many pens. First, you have to have a place. You have to have buy some machinery. And you need computers. You need to connect your electricity, the water, waters, and so many things. Let's say it's going to cost you $1,000 to get everything prepared. But for each pen, these are examples, it's going to cost you 20 cents per item. Then plus 20 cents per item. When I said 20 cents, maybe 1 cent for material, 2 cents for employee, half a cent for electric, half a cent for the machinery, I don't know, a combination of all of them is 20 cents. That's your cost. Therefore, by making a thousand of these, which is going to cost you 20 cents, that almost $200 for a thousand of these, plus the overhead, which is a thousand, for a thousand of these is going to cost you $1,200. You have to sell it for a dollar and some to only break even. As you produce more of these, your overhead become less and less and you start making profit. But what is your revenue? Revenue is going to be your price times how many of these pen do you sell? But let's talk about the price. You are producing, that's how many of these, that's how much market you have for these, 10,000 of these. But do you think anybody gonna buy the 10,000 pen that you produce? If you sell it at $20 a piece, I'm sure you ain't gonna sell any of it. Maybe 15, no, five. Therefore, 
as the price goes down and down and down, you're going to what? You're going to you're gonna sell more of these items. Therefore, you have 10,000 items, but it's going to... That's 10,000 items. But let, let's call the price right here. Maybe you can sell the 10,000 as a certain price. I don't know, maybe 50 cents each. But as the price get more and more and more and more and more and more and more, you sell less and less and less and less. Therefore, if this is your demand and this is your price, either the price is a function of demand or the demand is the price of that one. Let's assume right now the P is independent and X is dependent. Some, it is other way around. Or in many occasions, X demand is independent and the price is dependent. Therefore, in here, I'm going to just leave it like that. And I'm going to say, as this increases like $2 per item, the number of the item you sell, it becomes less and less and less. Therefore, as X increases, this goes down. Therefore, what is your price? Your price is 10000 minus X all over 2. That is a relationship between the price and the demand. Therefore, if I go to dealers and they have 65% sales, I buy a lot. But if they don't have sales, I buy what I need. Maybe none. I wait. If you go to 20 cents, maybe 20% off, I buy one. But 60, I buy two or three. The price goes down, I buy more. The price goes up, I buy less. Therefore, your revenue is your price, which is 5,000 minus one half X. That's your price times the number of the item you sell. That's your revenue. 5,000 X minus one half X squared. Okay, I got my price. I got my revenue. I got my cost. But what is my profit? Profit, it depends how I sell, which is your revenue minus your cost. Your revenue is 5,000 X minus one and a half X squared minus a cost. Your cost is right here. And when I apply by negative, that become a negative 1,000 minus 20 cents times X. Therefore, your that's not a price. Price doesn't have P of X. I just put P. Therefore, your profit is going to be 5,000 minus 0.2x minus one half x squared minus a thousand. See, that's your profit. And I'm going to ask you, when this is going to become maximized, it depends, remember, this is your cost, the more item you produce, the cost goes up. <laughs> then you have a revenue. Your revenue, it looks like a parabola facing down. And if I sell zero item, I have zero. And this is a parabola. Then you know here and here, I am breaking even. Because your cost... And your revenue come the same. But between these, the revenue is above. I'm making money. Here, your revenue is less than your cost. I'm losing money in this area. And after that, you better shut down your place because your cost is skyrocketed. Your revenue is go down. That's where the government go bankrupt and start borrowing money from China. What they bring in and what they spend, 
doesn't match. Where this vertical bar, at what X value, that vertical bar, which is the difference between revenue and cost, is the largest or the longest? Oh, that has something to do with the derivative. You take the P prime, which is 5,000 minus 0.2. I just write it like that because I don't want to subtract these two. Minus 2 times 1 half X. You set the derivative equal to 0. Therefore, your X is 5,000 minus 0.2. And this one is pretty much right in the middle. And if I take the second derivative, the second derivative is negative 1. The graph is concave down. Therefore, at that x value, my price, at that x value, my profit is the maximum. Therefore, in calculus 1, you took the first derivative, you set it equal to 0, you find out where the vertex but you didn't know if that vertex is down or up, down or up. You take the second derivative and you got it. And that's how we did optimization in calculus one. But the question is here right now, I come to Cal three and I said, do you really want to know your profit? I'm not only making the pen, I'm making pen, I'm making notebook too. Therefore, my profit depends on both of those. But this is what's an example. But right now, I'm going to make up a problem. And I'm going to say this one is 3x squared. This is just a made-up problem. And this is profit coming in place of a z, that you can call this on a z. 3x squared plus 3y minus a y cubed. I want to know for what x value and what y value. Right now, I have a multivariable. My z is gonna gonna become a, have a maximum value and a minimum value. Remember what is the domain of this? The domain I can replace any ordered pair is a sets of ordered pair that x and y both can take any value, which your x can take any value from negative infinity to plus infinity, and y can take any value from negative infinity to positive infinity. Therefore, I have an open interval. I can maneuver from negative infinity to positive infinity. But remember, in real life application, it ain't like that. In real life application, we have only 24 hours a day. You cannot open up your shop 48 hours a day. Therefore, you do have some constraint. You're going to maneuver on the closed interval. Maybe your business is open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Therefore, we're going to talk about that. But let's talk about this. This is the same as the first single variable function. But in here, you have to take the partial derivative here I can call it f or p. Respect to x is 6x. And partial derivative respect to y is 3 minus 3y squared. Over here, we took the derivative equal to 0. In here, both partial derivative has to become 0. And when x, 6x is 0, x is 0, but your 3y squared is 3, your y is squared is 1, your y is plus minus 1. Therefore, you have two ordered pair at those ordered pair here and here. I don't know. My z value, when I put those numbers here, my z value is going to become max or mean. But at least I find the critical point. These are my critical point. How do you find the critical point? Finding the f of x equal to 0 and the f of y equal to 0 and solve 
for an order pair. Okay, but I find a critical point. I don't know if this one is max or a mean. Oh, that's easy. That's very easy. If I replace zero and one right there, you get zero. And when it's one, you get three minus one is a two. But when I put zero and negative one, I get zero, negative three, because three times negative one, and negative one cubed is negative one. Negative times negative is a positive. Negative three plus one is a negative two. Therefore, you know, at that point, your z is the max. And at this one, it is mean. Because I find my critical point. Somebody said, well, here it was easy, but plug it in here, you find a critical point. Because there are only two order pairs, and plug the two critical points in here, and these are going to give me the relative max and mean, and in here I said relative. Yes, because the function might become a surface and it has many, many turning point, but only this turning point and that turning point going to produce max or a mean. Somebody said, can you apply the second derivative? Fortunately or unfortunately, when I take the second derivative, I don't know if I take this second derivative, this second derivative, this second derivative, or this second derivative. See, I ended up with four second derivatives. Which one do I need? And I have a bad news. You need all four of them. Then what is P of X of X is zero. What is P of X and a, I'm sorry, P of X and X is six. Because that's partial respect to X. Respect to another X is six. But if I take the partial of X respect to Y, I get a zero. But if I take the partial of Y respect to X, I get a zero. But if I do it with respect to y, I get a negative six. What am I going to do with these? Your second derivative, hopefully when you go to an upper level math classes and a PhD level, you see the proof. These are four items. These four quantity produce a matrix. I'm going to complete represent it by f instead of a p. f of xx, what is the derivative of another one? f of xy. What is the other one? f of yy. What is the another partial second derivative from the y? Is f of yx. And if you remember... When we talk about partial derivative, we always said order doesn't matter. If you take x, y, mean take the partial derivative of x respect to y, or take the partial derivative of y respect to x, both of them are going to be the same. If you don't remember it, I'm going to give you an example. See, f of x, y equal to x cubed y squared plus 2x minus a 5y. What is the partial derivative with respect to x? 3x squared y squared plus 2. What is the partial derivative of these respect to y? Respect to y, that's 2y. 2y times that one is 6x squared y. What is the partial derivative of this one respect to y? Respect to y? 2yx cubed 
and minus a 5 respect to y. But what is the partial derivative of y respect to x? 6x squared y, and that's the 0. You see how these are the same? Therefore, in second partial derivative order, it doesn't matter. When you mix them, I bet you partial derivative, if you have three variables, x, y, and a z, is the same as f of y, z, and a x. Order doesn't matter. These are going to be the same. Therefore, I know these two are the same. Therefore, I'm going to put write this one as a matrix and call the determinant of that matrix is a D. Always you have to find the determinant. You have to remember that. And what is f of x, x? 6. What was f of x, y? 0. What is f of y, x? 0. What is f of y, y? 6. Would you tell me what is the determinant of that matrix? The determinant of the D is 36. And in order for a function to have a maximum or a minimum, both, both max and mean, your D must be positive. There is no negative in there. Therefore, both max and mean. But somebody said, how do I tell the difference? You tell the difference by f of xx. If of xx is positive, oh, what is this? Positive and positive. Does anybody know what is positive time positive? Not here. Not here. Positive time positive is not a positive. Positive times a positive produce a minimum value. Therefore, if f of xx is positive and the determinant is positive, it produces a minimum value. If of x, if the determinant is positive, if the determinant is positive, but f of xx is negative, you know what a positive time a negative is? Somebody said that's negative. Not in here. That's the max. Okay. Let's go right here. And let's talk about that problem. And remember what was my point. My point was right here. This is your X and this is your Y. And what is a P of XX? Six. What is P of XY? Zero. And what is P of YY? Negative six Y. And P of YX is a zero. But remember, you have to plug that order pair in here. Therefore, when I put, there is no X in here. And I have to what? Write P of XX, P of XY, P of YX, and P of YY. Okay, this one is a zero. This one is a zero. P of XX is six. P of YY. YY is negative six Y. But how much is your Y right here? Your Y value is a negative six. And my determinant is negative 36. And what was my condition here? I said my condition is here. Your D has to be a positive. Is my D positive? No. But in here a few minutes ago, I said 0 and 1 is a critical point. It is a critical point. 100% is a critical point. And when I plug it right here, I got a 2. I call it a maximum because it's bigger than that. At that moment, I call this one max because I did not test the second derivative. But when I tested the second derivative, I find that that D has to be a positive. Therefore, that's not a max. The, in order for I have a mean, this has to be a positive. That's not a mean. Therefore, what happened if D is negative? If D is negative, both of these are critical point. 
but I have a bad news. That critical point, it does not produce, it is a turning point, but it does not produce a max or a mean. Let me give you an example. See right here? This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a hyperbola. This is a hyperbola. This is a saddle that you put inside the horse, on top of the horse. See, you put this one on top of a horse. You put this one on top of a horse. This is where you sit on the horse. And this is the bottom of the horse under the saddle. This is a turning point. This is a turning point. This one was zero and a one. This one was zero and a negative one. But zero, one, and zero, and negative one does not produce a max, or it doesn't produce a mean. It is a turning point. Therefore, if your D is negative, they call it a saddle point. I'm sorry. Therefore, the one I find right here is neither max and a mean. Both of them are sad. But somebody said, what happened when D become positive? If D is positive, you either have max or mean. It depends to F of XX. Positive times positive, minimum. Positive times negative is a maximum. And you will see the proof in the future. But what happens if D is negative? It's a saddle point. It's a critical point, but it's not a max or a mean. But what happens if D is zero? When the D is zero, it's just like the second derivative in calculus one. We don't know if it's concave up. We don't know if it's concave down. You have to go to the first derivative test. And do minus, 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 positive, 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 positive. This one going down, this one is going up, and determine if this is a mean. And in here is not a mean or a max, because both of them are what? This is an asymptote. Therefore, if your, if your D is zero, you do need a technology. And that technology help you. If this one is a saddle point, if this one is a max, or this one is a mean. In the next video, I'm going to do a couple of examples. Therefore, from today, you have to know that if you're going to optimize it, you have to find f of x, f of x, f of y, simultaneously equal to zero, and solve for ordered pair. Those order pair, you could have one set or two or three. I don't know how many you're going to have. Then you have to find your D. Your D is nothing except f of xx, f of yy. These are f of xy, f of yx. This is f of xy and f of yx. And if the D is positive and f of xx is positive, you have mean. If your D is positive and f of xx is negative, is a max. If D is negative, only determinant, is a saddle. And if D is zero, is inconclusive. I don't know what it is. You have to have a terminal uh, technology to do it. And I'm going to teach you another method other than if you don't have a technology, another way, completing the square. And completing the square is not sometimes easy if you have mixed variable. But if you don't have a mixed variable, it's possible.